Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're back on with the mosquito and I just want to do a very quick video uh, this time for this part just to finish off the stenciling and make a start on some of the weathering as well. So just a nice short video this week on the mosquito. Uh, you'll Quite a few of you have been asking what's happened to the model over the last few weeks whilst I've been building the Bismarck I made a start on that about three weeks ago something like that and I've not done anything with the mosquito since then so I thought it was time to get back on it uh, especially since I've got a new 132 scale project in the wings which I want to be starting towards the end of the month so I want to wrap this mosquito up so I'm not going to go through the whole process of applying every stencil you can see that I've already done most of them but I will concentrate on this port side keep off or no step panel which goes over the uh, wing radiators and if any of you have ever built a mosquito in any scale you'll know that this is the toughest of the decals to fit because of the uh, raised detail on the area so we've got a vent here we've got a uh, sunken panel here a couple of blisters and lots of rivets both raised and uh, recessed so we've got a lot of work to do to get this panel to fit but these barracuda decals are really high quality so I'm using this particular set 32268 mosquito to external stencils and the model has been a little bit delayed because my first set which I've had for a good few years uh, when I applied the starboard uh, panel it broke up completely so I had to get a new set so I've been waiting for those and it's just put a little bit of a hold on the build but we're back on it now and uh, I'm going to get this last panel fitted now on camera I'll probably do a couple of the other underside stencils but by no means am I going to go through the whole process apart from these panels it's quite straightforward to do the decals on a mosquito because the airframe is generally so smooth and flat these barracuda cals are printed by cartograph and they're really thin the ones that I've already fitted here so you can see the dihedral and incidence lines that are fitted they just melted onto the paint finish so they've gone on really well and I've not got any concerns at all about what they're going to look like when uh, I come to do the top finishes on the build. The one thing that I will do though with this panel is to cut out around this vent because even with microsol the panel will struggle to lay flat and you want this edge here to be perfectly straight along here and if you start using microsol to get it to conform around this vent uh, it's very easy to get distortion on the edge here so I'm not going to do that I'm just going to cut a panel out which is what I've done on this side and it simply just fits over the top of the vent so it's just a case of measuring up roughly where that vents going to appear in the carrier film and just cutting out you don't have to go all the way through uh, just as long as it's through the film when it comes off the sheet the decal will lose that piece of film which will then slot over the vent so I'm going to put this into some warm water just a few seconds in warm water and to get them to settle down a little bit I've been using Mark Fit Strong Tamiya's Mark Fit Strong and the Barracuda cals have responded really well to that. So making sure that the whole area is thoroughly coated with the mark fit. So as the decals sliding off the sheet, I'm just going to remove that little panel that I cut out and that should drop just over the vent
that started to settle a bit now. I'm going to help it a little bit by just puncturing the film around the rivets, the raised rivets. Now with this particular panel I will use some microsol just to get the decal down tight over these bolt heads and the other bits of raised detail. And then just leave that alone for a while, just let the microsol do its thing. This is a cotton bud soaked in a little bit of microsol. That just gets right round the rivets and pushes the edges of the carrier film right the way down onto the surface. One thing I avoid when I'm using microsol or after I've used microsol is to push the decal one way or another it stretches it and once you start to lose the shape it's uh, quite difficult to get it back so I just dab straight down onto the decal and that seems to work for me anyway just help it to settle down into this recessed panel Good, nice and sharp around that now. Okay, so I'll let that uh, dry completely now. It's settled down really well. The detail's nice and sharp. Can't see any silvering at all. Of course, the test of that will be when we put the top coat of varnish on. But I think we'll be all right. Looks okay from this view at the moment. Nice. If only Tamir would employ cartograph. Okay, so they've gone on really well. They've conformed now to all the detail on there. Got the panel lines all recessed. So uh, that's good to go. So I've just got these last two decals to fit onto the underside of the flaps. Then uh, I'll come and uh, give the model a panel line wash. Okay, so that's all the Barracuda stencils fitted. So I'm just going to let them dry, give the model a quick wash over, uh, just with some water and a bit of detergent in it. Then I'll do the panel line wash next. Okay, so time to uh, do some wash now, panel line wash I'm going to be doing. And for that I'm using Ammo MIG enamel wash. This is Starship wash and it's an interesting colour it's a very dark brown and it goes really well on RAF uh, grey green camouflage schemes it's dark enough to show up on the green but it's not too overpowering on the paler grey colour so I, I like it a lot for RAF subjects it works just as well on dark earth and green camouflage schemes 
uh, so it works really well. It's an enamel wash, so it'll wash off with some uh, mineral spirits or white spirits, as we we'll call it in the UK. And I just apply this locally to the panel line, so it's what's known as a pin wash. Some people prefer to just coat the whole model, but I think that's a little bit of a waste of the material, really. So. I just apply it to the panel lines and around these bolt heads I'll do that as well. The other thing that I like about the Starship wash is that when you remove it it gives an impression of really sort of oil stains and oily dirt. which I think works really well on aircraft. Obviously the maintenance activity on the aircraft, you would have dirty, oily hands handling the paint surface. So this just generally stains as well as goes into the panel lines themselves. Being a mosquito, there's not an awful lot to cover because of the nature of the construction. It's very smooth. So there are very few panels to fill in. And that's it, there's nothing else to do uh, on the wings in terms of the panel lines because they're so clean. Now some people I know remove the wash straight away but I don't really think that works too well or at least I prefer not to do that because to me it just wipes off virtually all the wash. Whereas if you let it dry, it will stay in the panel lines and it's very difficult to remove once it's dry in panel lines. So to me, that's what you're after. But uh, everyone to his own preference. I just like to let these dry and I'll leave it for a good uh, four or five hours, something like that, to make sure that it is fully dry. It's going to be a bit quicker today because it's pretty warm in the UK at the moment. We've got temperatures in the high 20s, early 30s, which is fairly unusual for the UK. Uh, but it's good for uh, making enamel paint dry a little bit quicker. And I know that there's a lot of people, a lot of viewers from uh, the USA, particularly in Australia, who would laugh at the thought that 30 degrees is uh, unusually hot uh, but it is to us we're not used to it so I'm going to carry on applying the wash and then we'll come back once this is all dried and we'll do the next stage to remove some of it uh, and get a little bit of streaking effect and a bit of staining onto the paint as well at the same time okay so this wash has been drying for about four hours now and I'm going to start to remove it just with a tissue and I'm just going to be wiping back along the airframe like that and as you wipe backwards you're getting a streaking effect from the wash which is uh, what I'm after it's only the first part of the weathering process. I'm going to be doing some more on this, but it's the start of what we want to do to get those streaky effects on the flying surfaces particularly.
the longer the wash is left the harder it is to remove without using any spirits for me this is about the right time to remove it you've got more control over how much is left on the model and you can just start to play around with some of those effects so on the underside the wash shows up really nicely in all the recessed rivets particularly here on the ailerons the elevators as well have got plenty of streaking on them. Occasionally you just have to resort to using a little bit of white spirit just to get rid of anything that's stubborn that uh, won't just wipe off with a bare cloth. I'm pretty happy with that as a first attempt or a first pass if you like at uh, weathering the airframe. The next thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of flory dark dirt. This is an acrylic wash so it'll wash off with water whereas the uh, MIG wash is an enamel wash and obviously you need those mineral spirits to remove it. These uh, washes, once they're applied, they're quite versatile really because if you have a really wet towel, uh, it'll remove virtually all of it and you can start again. So if you don't like uh, what you've got, uh, just try again until you are happy with it. I try and just moisten the towel very slightly and that way it retains some of the wash in the towel and streaks it across the surface of the model. But it's just a case of experimenting really. You'll find eventually something that you're happy with. It's very forgiving this stuff. Going back with some of the Starship wash now and I'll just alternate really between the Starship wash and the Flory wash just to try and get variation into the finish and I'll just play around with this until I'm happy with it. 
The cowlings I'm going to weather separately. You can see I've taken them off now. And that's because a lot of the dirt on a cowling like this, a removable cowling, comes from it being left on the ground and handled separately to the rest of the airframe. So I don't want it to be a continuous dirt effect all the way across the nacelle. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm not going to do any more with it. There's always a risk of overdoing it and part of the skill with weathering I think is knowing when to stop. I've ruined many a model by just going too far and as you know if you've seen my other builds you know that I don't like an awful lot of weathering. So that's about as dirty as I want the model to look. It's difficult to know what it looks like on camera really as I'm sitting here in the shed but to the eye it's just how I like it, not too overdone. I might do a little bit more on it, might put some powders on it later on once I've got the uh, top coat of varnish on it but that'll certainly do for now. Just got these cowlings to clean up now. The other thing that I'll have to do off camera is all the undercarriage doors and the Bombay doors. I don't want them looking pristine when the rest of the airframe is in this sort of dirty state. The Starship wash, because it's got a little bit of brown in it, it uh, makes these look oil stained or at least as though they've been handled by oily hands. And it's a nice effect, that's why I like the Starship wash so much from MIG. They are suitably grimy cowlings. I've got the flaps done as well. They've just got some streaking on the underside. And I'm going to leave it at that for this session. So when the wash has had time to dry, so tomorrow really, I'll come back and give this another coat of gloss, the Tamiya X22 gloss, just to seal everything in. And then we can think about putting a top coat on and for that I'm going to be using a satin varnish. I don't want a full matte on this. So uh, I'll use my favourite, which is Alclad uh, Light Sheen. But that's for next time. I want to uh, let this dry as I said. And, and we'll pick it up again next time. So I'll work on this Mosquito in between the Bismarck. But hopefully I'll do all that work that I've just described over the next week and hopefully we'll get another video out in the next seven to ten days something like that so hopefully there's been something useful in there for you so uh, i'll get that work done and hopefully we'll see you next time thanks everybody bye for now